Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this spiffy shirt that I am wearing. It is part of stash busting as well as making a more historically inspired wardrobe. I am super excited about this project and I can't wait to share it all with you. So let's get to it. I used my shirt block pattern to cut out this shirt. And then I cut the front neckline about an inch lower to make it more comfortable. The next step was to cut down the fold of the front bodice piece. This will give you two front bodice pieces and one back. After all the modifications to the pattern are done, pin the shoulder seams together. Once you have the shoulder seam sewn, it is time to put on the front button placket. Pin the right side of the placket to the wrong side of the center front bodice. Do this to both front bodice pieces. After they have been pinned, sew the plackets onto the bodice. Then I ironed the placket in half before pressing it away from the bodice. The next step was to turn over the shirt so the right side of the material was facing up. Fold the raw edge of the placket under by about half an inch and press it down. Then I top stitch the placket down, making sure to stay as close to the edge as possible. Then it was time to put on the collar. I started by sewing the center back seam of the collar together. Then I pinned the collar seam to the center back of the neckline. Make sure to pin the right side of the collar to the wrong side of the shirt like we did with the button placket. After all the pins were in, I sewed the collar to the shirt. Then I repeated the same pressing steps we did on the button placket. Iron the collar in half, press it away from the shirt, and then fold the raw edge of the collar under by half an inch and iron. When all the ironing was done, I pinned the collar into place to prepare it for sewing. After all of the pins have been placed to your satisfaction, top stitch the collar down. I like to start at the center back and sew towards the front to make sure that it doesn't get wonky. Then I folded the raw edges of the ties in by half an inch and top stitched them together. This will give you a clean finish. I also mitered the edge of my ties, which is completely optional. Now we're moving on to the sleeves. I cut the selvage off to prepare for the placket. I used the fold to mark the back quarter of the left and right sleeve. Then I measured two and a half inches from the bottom of the sleeve. I used the fold to help me cut a straight line. Then I measured another half an inch down and how wide I wanted my placket to be and cut to either corner so the entire cut formed a Y. And then I pinned the under piece of the placket to the wrong side of the sleeve. You want to make sure you're pinning it to the correct side of the Y cut so that your placket will close correctly. I remember to do this by pinning it to the shorter end of the sleeve. After the pins are placed, you will want to sew the placket down. Make sure not to go past the Y cut so it'll be easier to turn. Then you'll want to press the placket the same way we pressed the button placket on the front and the collar. A lot of sewing is repetitive steps, which can be difficult if you don't know what order to put your steps in, but once you get the fill for it, it's fairly easy to piece together what needs to be done. Once all of the ironing has been done, top stitch the placket down. Again, be sure not to go past the Y seam or it'll make it very difficult to do the next step, which is to finish the top side of the under placket. You will want to pull the center of the Y cut out, fold your fabric so that it is flushed with the top points of the Y cut, and sew the tab to the extra bit of the under placket. You'll want to make sure that it's secure by going back and forth a few times. Then I cut the excess of the placket off so it was flush with the edge of the sleeve and trimmed the other end to prepare it for the upper placket piece. We are going to follow the same steps to attach the upper placket. You'll want to make sure that you leave a longer tail inside the sleeve so we can finish everything off nicely.
An optional step is to make the upper placket slightly bigger than the under placket. I like to do this because it ensures that the upper placket will completely cover the lower placket, which is the goal. When all of the excess is done, you will want to cut the placket flush with the edge of the sleeve and then any excess on the other side down to about one inch. Fold all of the raw edges under to prep them for top stitching. When you top stitch the upper placket down, go all the way down to the bottom. Make sure that you don't catch any part of the sleeve in your stitching. I like to top stitch around the edges and across where you sewed the Y seam to the under placket. Then I sewed an X through the center to secure it even more. This step is optional. Now the sleeve pocket is done and the hardest part is over. I love doing plackets this way because it gives it a nice clean finish on the front and back. Now it's time to set in the sleeve. I start by finding the center of the sleeve head. Then I lined up the center of the sleeve head with the shoulder seam. And the edges of the sleeve with the edges of the arm eye. Then I pinned the sleeve into the arm eye, pleating the extra material at the top of the sleeve head. You know, to give it some poof. When you have finished pinning, sew the sleeve to the bodice. After the sleeves are attached, it's time to sew the side seams closed. Make sure that your seams match up nicely and pin the rest of the sleeve and side seam together. After pinning, sew the seam together. At this point, I hemmed the bottom of my shirt so I would not have to do it later. The next step was to attach the sleeve cuffs. I started by folding the cuffs in half and pinning the edges together to prepare them for sewing. After they are sewn, you'll want to turn and press your cuffs. I wanted to pleat my sleeves into my cuff rather than gather, so I found the four quarters and marked them with pins. I did the same on the cuffs. I lined everything up and pinned the cuff to the sleeve. Make sure you are pinning to the wrong side of the sleeve to help you get a clean finish. Then pleat evenly into the cuff. After you finish the pleating, sew the cuff to the sleeve. Then finish the cuff the same way we finished everything else. We are now on the last step, adding the buttonholes and buttons. I marked my buttonholes two inches apart. as well as marked the buttonhole placement on the sleeve cuffs. 
then I sewed my buttonholes. When you open your buttonholes, be careful not to cut through your stitching. The final step is to attach your buttons. I am really happy with this shirt. I am super excited to integrate it into my wardrobe. I think it'll go perfectly. And that is the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and I'll see you next week. Bye!